Lisa, who is an expert in document automation and has already spoken in the Power Community many, many times. But maybe Lisa, you can introduce yourself very quickly. Yeah, thanks Norina for, for the introduction and hello to everyone. I'm happy to be back once again at the awesome Power Community and to be showing you lots of really cool live demos and scenarios on how you can automate all your documents with data from Dataverse or any other system. And you will see a lot today, we've prepared a lot of awesome content. And on that, I'm giving back to Norina, who is really sitting across me. <laughs> yes, so we're in the office today in Vienna, like Raz mentioned already. And yeah, we're very happy um, to be here and to present to you Let's Power Automate all your D365 and M365 documents. So to get started, um, you maybe know us already from the Power community because we have been part of it since many, many years. And um, we really also like the on-site events. Uh, unfortunately, now they're not possible, but we hope they will be possible soon again. And um, there are some impressions from the last years. Lisa, I think you can you can really say that those were great events. Oh yeah, especially the one where we got to see that <laughs> waiter. <laughs> it was really cool, but it's it's awesome to be here today. But of course, we're missing to be um, in person and to meet everyone mm -hmm. live. So hopefully, maybe next year again. Yeah, hopefully. And um, that also brings us to the Lego sets that you actually see here. So um, that is something we really like to do. Um, and we brought you a little Yoda today. So you can actually win this guy. Um, just scan the QR code. Um, we will also post a link later on. And then you have to answer some questions. If you already know Docs42, they might be easy already. If not, you can just wait until the end of our session and uh, you will be a Docs42 Pro then and you can um, participate in the quiz afterwards as well. So what's actually on our agenda today? We're gonna talk about document automation in general. So what are the challenges of document automation and how you can solve them with Docs42? And of course, we have a lot of live uh, scenarios for you, Lisa is going to show you a sales code automation from Dynamics CE and is also going to show you how this connects with uh, our Docs42 Power Automate connector. So really great scenarios there. We will also show you how the template design is actually done in Microsoft um, Office, Word, Excel and PowerPoint. And um, at the end, I'm going to show you how HR documents can actually also be automated using Power Apps and SharePoint. And of course, in the end, we will have some time for uh, the Q&A. Okay, but before we get started um, on what document automation and Docs42 actually is, uh, do you already know Docs42? We would actually ask you to scan the QR code uh, to participate in this little question um, game and then we kind of know if there are already people among you that know Docs42 or if you're not familiar with it yet. Exactly and while everyone is answering those questions I'm going to take over and I'm going to start sharing my screen and I'm actually here so if you haven't had the chance to scan yet I'm actually showing you the responses already and everyone said so far they don't know Docs42 yet. I think that's that's quite good. We enjoyed it, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so everyone learned something, something new today. Let's just wait a couple of seconds more. Another person that doesn't know Docs42 yet. Um, so great, we will be having mm -hmm. lots of hopefully valuable uh, takeaways for you and lots of lots of interesting content. Yes, definitely. Good. Thanks for participating in that and have your phones available right next to you because there will be some other um, QR codes still coming in. Ah, yeah, one person knows this already from Power Community. Maybe that's rest. <laughs> Maybe that's rest. <laughs> Good. So let's get back to the presentation then. And let's start with what document automation actually is. 
So basically, we're using many, many systems on our daily basis. We're having lots of tables and data stored in Dataverse, potentially finance and operations, Dynamics CE, BC, SharePoint, Teams, in Microsoft SQL databases, Excel, or wherever. And on that, on a daily basis, a lot of transactions are happening, a lot of business processes are running, and the result of a business process is many, many times a document. A document that's like a structured document that's taking data from those systems. So what could that be? That could be a sales presentation with data coming from our ERP. That could be a quote, um, like an order confirmation. It could be a quote. It could be an invoice. It could be emails that are sent. Lots and lots of documents that need to be created on a daily basis based on data from our systems. And it happen, can happen in, in hundreds and in thousands. So now, um, as you see, lots of documents, that means a lot of, of effort and a lot of like processes that could be automated in the background. So what do we actually see in practice how companies usually generate their documents? The first scenario we always see and what we say is our biggest competitor is copy paste. We get it, it's flexible and individual, and I'm guilty of copy pasting as well once in a time, one, uh, um, like sometimes, because it can be fast. However, if you really have to create lots of documents, it can really be costly and cumbersome, and you can make mistakes. So you, for example, copy like one piece of information from your CRM into your Word document, and you might Miss, miss a letter, you might miss a figure, and you have some, some mistakes there. It's slow, errors can happen, and it needs a lot of stress for the person that needs to set up the document. So that's the first thing we see in reality. Then there are some other companies that say, yeah, we have to automate that copy paste. It's not the way to go. So what they do is they create their own macros, they work with VBA, they work with apps, which is also flexible and individual and you get some kind of automation and your errors are reduced, which is fine. However, also there, only low numbers of documents are possible. So if you're working in enterprise scenarios where you have to create thousands of documents, it will be hard with like some, some small um, macros or um, self-made solutions. It only works from nine to five, once again. And the big, big thing is, what do you do when a person that has set up this app or this a macro actually leaves the company. It's really hard to adapt and to keep on to keep maintaining it. And there's another approach we see then really for the big enterprise scenarios is where they use like the big out of the box automation from uh, these 365 standards like SSRS from finance and operations. It's good because you have server side automation and it can run 24 seven and that means high performance. However, the documents are not flexible and individual anymore. So when we think of documents, documents are also kind of like a customer communication. So it's something we send out, it's how we communicate with the customers. But if you're standard from SSRS, you're just not nicely looking. The corporate design is done by, by IT and not by marketing, for example. Um, and if you want to change something or integrate some external data sources, you might not be able to do that, or it means a lot of programming effort, which in the end is also very, very costly to do. So those are the three approaches we see in business life. But then there's where Docs42 comes in. And what's the idea behind Docs42, the document automation piece? So first of all, we know that when it comes to document automation, there are three parties involved. There's the IT, who knows okay, which data sources are we using? Are we having dataverse? Are we using finance and operations? Potentially SAP. Then we have the business. They know the content that needs to go into the document. Like for example, they know what needs to be in the quote or what information needs to be in a contract. And then there's marketing that knows about the latest logo, the corporate identity and so on. What we do is we say, okay, yeah, IT is there in the background. They provide like the data integration, but business and marketing can work on the templates themselves because the design is very easily and flexibly done in Microsoft Office with, without a lot of effort, without programming. 
they can really change and adjust the documents how they like, no programming needed, and also the manual effort is taken away. And that's the idea behind Docs42, so to bring all three of them um, to the table and to let everyone uh, let their expertise flow into the document automation. Good. Then about us, so we really we focus on document generation with everything we do. We're a software provider based in Austria, Vienna, but we have customers and partners around the world. And we're also always looking for partners that do Docs42 implementation of projects. So if you're interested, just send us a message. We have around 450 customers across the globe and across any industry that are using Docs42 for the document automation piece. What are USPs? On the one hand, the intuitive design of complex documents in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And you will see Word and PowerPoint scenarios today in the live demos. Then the flexible data integration. Today we will focus on Dataverse, Dynamics, SharePoint, but also BC and others are possible, and the flexible document output. We will also see that today. And one example we brought to you today is Fraser Yards. They are using Docs42 for all their brochures and sales documents. So what they were looking for was a tool for creating really high quality documents that represents the high quality brand of, the, of their company. And they're automating quotes and um, PowerPoint presentation brochures from Dynamics CE and using directly our CE solution or also Power Automate flows. And that's such a scenario Marina, can you now tell us more about the functionalities? Yes, sure. So Lisa has talked a lot about um, what Docs42 does, and um, I will show you how that actually looks like. So you see on the left hand, this is actually the Docs42 ribbon. So we're in Microsoft Word, and um, you can drag and drop your data fields into the document and then generate it with your data. And on the right hand side, you see a sales report with the information um, that Docs42 pulled from all of your systems. And you can see you can also integrate images, you can also integrate charts or graphs. Um, anything is possible with Docs42, also QR codes, for example. How is this done? On the left hand side, you see the heart of any Docs42 um, template, it's actually the data map. So this is where you integrate your data without any programming. And you can see you can mix and match all kinds of data sources. So you can use an Excel sheet, for example, but also use data from CE, BC, FO, SAP, and so on. And like I mentioned, you then just simply drag and drop your data field into the document and format it, and format it using all the normal um, Word and PowerPoint and Excel functionalities. As I mentioned, you can integrate many, many da different data sources. Um, you can use data from Dataverse and um, also uh, Dynamics 365, of course, but also SAP and SharePoint, Excel web services. So Docs42 is really flexible. And you can even create your own um, custom input if that's necessary. But yeah, this is actually all about you. So we want to know what technologies are you actually interested in? So we would ask you to um, scan the QR code again um, and tell us what technologies are interesting to you so can we can also kind of tell you more about those in the demo and let's see i will open up this one here you have the qr code again let's see if anyone has responded yet so we see of course dataverse um, very good power automate yes we will talk about that a lot today and uh, power apps we will also show you a scenario from a Power App, so um, good as well. And Dynamic CE, Lisa is going to show uh, a lot of scenarios from CE today. Okay, nobody for BC or FinOps, okay. And also digital signing, very well. Okay, yeah, we will also include that in the demo with DocuSign today. Okay, 
Great, thank you all for your um, participation. Just let me switch back. So um, this was the input side, but of course Docs42 can also output a lot of formats. So you can of course uh, output Word files and PowerPoint slides and PDF, but you can also choose from any other output action. So like I mentioned, you can actually send your documents right away with um, DocuSign and you can also um, archive them to SharePoint or um, send Teams messages you can also um, archive them to Dropbox, for example. We have an out-of-the-box solution for that as well. And um, yeah, anything is pretty much possible. You can also build your own uh, custom output action. And um, just to mention, Docs42 is available on-premises, but also as a cloud service, Docs42 online. And um, we will show that um, in a second, but uh, Docs42 also integrates with Power Automate and Power Apps, um, but also works with uh, any common workflow tool. So we have a standard integration, Firestart and Nintex and K2 to really um, automate all your processes at once. But that's enough for the theoretical part. We will start with the live demo now. And this is where I give the word back to Lisa. Um, she's gonna show us a CE example right now. Yes, exactly. And judging from like the um, uh, the quiz we had, I think we prepared to write demos yep. <laughs> today, which exactly. is like good. Um, I'm just gonna uh, with um, sharing my slides and then I'm back sharing my screen. Good, yeah. So we will start here in Dynamics CE and the first scenario which I'm going to introduce you to is a quote generation. The first one is I'm going to generate it directly here in Dynamics CE with our Dynamics CE solution and then afterwards I'm also going to generate it with a power automate flow using a Dataverse trigger. So what's the scenario? We are selling solar panels in that hypothetical scenario. Uh, we have three different products here in our quote uh, so that we want to include, of course. We here have customer information, who should the quote be sent to, and so on. And now when you're selling solar panels, they're quite a complex product. So just creating a quote with a table and three lines of products won't be enough. There's a huge project team that was involved in getting the project up and ready and getting like a quote up and ready to run. And we want to include that information in our document. So what we do is we have here those data sources. Plus here you can see the quote ID. And for that quote ID, we actually set up a folder within SharePoint where the project team uploaded some additional information we want to include in our quote. So. Here you can see once again, uh, that's our quote ID. And here I have four different documents which I want to integrate. Let's have a look at those. So the first one is a really a personalized cover letter, personalized introduction with some pictures that should go out to the customer, normal work document. Second one is for the installation. The technical team, they have set up an installation. Actually, they don't have access to Dynamics CRM. They don't store that kind of data. So it's just here an Excel. And as you can see, we can adjust it. And then it's actually a formula behind. We want to integrate that. Then, uh -huh. so I hate it when it comes up from Teams. <laughs> Good. Give me a second, now it's back. Yeah, here we have it. And then we have a PowerPoint presentation where we want to integrate that picture back into a document, as well as a small incentive document from marketing. And if I, for example, make an adjustment here, I say, okay, this is going to be in blue. We will see that this is actually live data we are integrating, that this is going to show in blue. Good. So now I'm back here within Dynamics. And what I want to do is me as the salesperson, I don't want any manual effort to create that quote. I just simply click on the Docs42 integration up here. And here we have the Docs42 pop up. I say, okay, I want to generate um, um, 
templates or a quote in English. So please show me my English templates. I have here different um, sales quotes available. I'm taking that one and it should be generated as a PDF document for me. So now I click on OK. And now Docs42 loads a template that we have in the background. It's integrating the data we saw here from those Dataverse tables here within Dynamics and also integrating the data that's coming from SharePoint. So here it is generated and we can see a document here with the logo. Here's the address. Then this one was the first Word document that was stored on SharePoint that's integrated here. Here we have a dynamic table inserted. This was the Excel, which we've seen. Here we have the PowerPoint slide and also here the Word document and you see that here the changes are live and already included. Great. So that was the first option. I could just simply generate um, a, a PDF and return it. Another option would be that I say, okay, once again, I'm taking my sales for document. It should be, oh, that was the wrong one. I'm taking this one. It should be a docx. And I want to send it by email coming from Dynamics. So now, again, it's generated, but now the document is not returned to me, but actually um, an email is generated within Dynamics and the document is stored in the attachment for it. And that will open up in a second. And now I could send my document by email. And here you can see a sales quote docx document. So that's basically the same document, but just now in docx format. Great. And then I have many other output options that I can, can choose. So here we have some more that I could save the document to SharePoint. I could create a draft email and send it from my Outlook. I could send it straight away by email, which I will show you later. I could attach it to the entity to an entity, or I could get a could, could start an approval workflow. But what I want to do right now is I actually really like the, the, the template and the document already, but I want to do a small change. The customer has been quite a loyal one, and I think 15% discount is not enough, so I'm changing it to 20%. And I'm saving it here, and now what I could do is I could click again on the button and regenerate the document, but actually I don't need to do that. So as soon as I change this 20% discount here now, a data workflow was triggered, that regenerated the document and stored it for me on SharePoint. This is happening in the background. Let me first show you that, that, uh, that flow in the background. So I'm here within Power Automate, and here you can see we have the Dataverse sales quote flow, which was started 24 seconds ago and succeeded. I will show you that, that in a second then. But first, let's see, here we have a trigger from Dataverse when a row is added, modified, or delete from my quotes table, then the Docs42 service call should start. So for you to know, Docs42, we have a premium and a custom connector available in PowerPoint, so you can easily set up your calls. And basically here we set that Docs42 should generate the document and store it for me on SharePoint, and we're also integrating some dynamic data coming from Dataverse in our flow. That's how the flow is set up. And if I have a look in our in my sales quotes, and then I can see here the sales, the data words flow document was generated, modified by me with that um, with dynamic metadata as well. And just to prove you that here we have now a 20% discount included. We have a question mm -hmm. um, on the more technical part. Mm -hmm. So how does it know to traverse through four different files? Do you have to define a document template beforehand? That's a perfect question because I'm going to show you the template right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, yeah, in Dynamics within our solution, you tell Docs42 which template to take. But first of all, you have to set up the template within, uh, within Microsoft Word and then you upload the template to SharePoint, and I'm going to show you that now. 
So I am here within my Dynamics SharePoint. Here we are. And here I have a library for my for sales templates where I've uploaded and stored all my templates. And then I can go to my sales quote, which is this one, this template. And I'm going to open it up. And now we will see the template for the document which I just generated. So instead of all the data, we can see a lot of like colorful placeholders. Those are the docs for the two data fields. And if I click on one of those data fields, then the Docs42 data field explorer, that's how we call it, opens on the right hand side and I can see where my data comes from. In that case, it comes from a data source called organization and the field is called name. Also here, it's name or here it would be the quote number coming from my sales quote data source. So we can see different data sources added here, some dynamics and some SharePoint data sources. For example, this one here, the name, this is coming from SharePoint, and this was our first Word document, which we integrated. And before I explain you some more, up here in the Docs 42 ribbon, when I change or when I adjust my template, I can, for example, really easily, I'm gonna do that right now, I'm gonna say this should not be in italic. Um, I can always test and change and adjust my template and I'm going to say I'm going to generate it locally. So now Docs42 is connecting to Dynamics, so it's logging in in the background. It's giving me all the quotes I have available because that's my primary entity or my primary table. And I can click on generate and now I get the document returned here um, within Word and also all my the correct data inserted and integrated from SharePoint and from Dynamics. And we're going to view it side by side. And here we can, can see here's the address, like this block turned into the address. This one, for example, this one turned into the Word document. Or down below here we have a dynamic table. So in the template we only have one line of fields, but here the table has three lines because we have three products. If it was five, uh, five products, for example, the table would have five lines. If it was uh, just, just one product, it would only have one line, so we can make dynamic tables. Or here in the template, we have a, a, freight, edit, a freight line edit, but in a generated document, it isn't shown at all. This is because we placed a condition here. And in the condition we set, only show this line if from a data source sales quote the freight amount is not empty. Apparently there was no freight amount so this whole line isn't shown. And this is how you can set up your, um, your conditions. We actually have a question on the columns. Mm -hmm. um, will it have errors if I change the column name in my data source tables or does it refer to the schema name of the fields instead? Which Columns talking about basically, um, I guess the question comes to here. So basically, what we have so those the, the field names, what you can see are the names you use in dynamics, and if you hover over it, those are the labels you use in dynamics. And basically, you can't change like the field names here because that's exactly how it's used in dynamics but you can adjust the labels just as how you need them. I hope that answers the question. Let's see. Yeah. And um, we have another one mm -hmm. on, the, on the general topic. How will you manage the transition of your plugins to Word on the web and modern JavaScript add-ins? Does that cause you some headache? Yeah, so potential so so far the add-ins just work within uh, Word, the app of Word. But this is not our fault. This is because Microsoft doesn't allow yet to have those add-ins and plugins within Word on the web. Whenever this will be available, whenever it will be on the roadmap of Microsoft, we will of course look into it. We will have that available as well. But as of now, Microsoft doesn't allow add-ins like Docs 42 to be uh, available on the web app. But important question, yeah. 
And yeah, and also on the the, the add-in and on the design side within uh, within Office, of course, the data integration is a very crucial and important one. That's how how you set up your templates. Basically, within the data map designer, you can see your data fields, uh, your data sources available to you. That starts from SQL to SharePoint to XML JSON, so where you can integrate O data calls, for example, to the Dataverse and Dynamics CE data source. F and O data source, PC data source, and even SAP data sources. And let me just quickly show you uh, on the CE side, you basically with Azure Active Directory connect to, um, to your system, and then you can read all tables and entities you have available in Dataverse and in CE. For example, here the quote entity, you can then here choose which fields you want to read. I have already some selected. And then when I click on test, I can see perfect, for example, the name, this field I want to have available and to be able to drag and drop it into the document. It has a lot of data. That's how you integrate data sources. So much just for a quick overview on the template design. Another question? Yes. Um, if I create some templates, cloud flows, etc., in a development instance, what approach do you take to migrate to test or production instances? Can it be done without having to manually edit the templates in the other environments? Yeah, that's a very good question. And for that, what we recommend you to have is a connection file. So basically, you store your, your connection information in one Excel and with that dynamically um, connect to your system so you only have to change it at one your connection data just at, at one instance here in this excel and it will automatically be updated for all your templates so it's a matter of 10 seconds and then you can migrate migrate the templates you're welcome good uh, and then let me let me move on to show you something else so what you've seen so far for um for a word template can also work for PowerPoint templates. And we have an example here within our opportunities. And I have my solar panels proposal here. So it's a proposal presentation I want to generate for my customer, also with lots of information coming from Dynamics and also SharePoint. And I have here the opportunity to, for example, generate a PowerPoint, a PDF, send it by email and so on, or store it to SharePoint. I'm actually gonna do the store to SharePoint right now. And now it's generating the, the proposal for me. In that case, it's a PowerPoint um, template that is also managed on SharePoint, also available there. And now it's generating the presentation. And in that case, I have my SharePoint uh, library integrated here. And we can see live, we generated the document now the PowerPoint, and here we have exactly with the data from dynamics and some pictures and some repeating slides and information, a PowerPoint presentation automatically generated. And here as well, what I've, of course, I can trigger as a, a data worst flow here as well. In our case, we use the same trigger. We set a data worst trigger. And if I change something within the proposal, the data worst flow is triggered. I can show you the flow just really quickly. So we have a PowerPoint proposal data worst flow. And again, here, when something happens with an opportunity, then the docs 42 service is called. And now in that case, it's the document is not stored in SharePoint, but it's actually sent by email and also sent to a Teams channel. So let's have a look in our Teams. And let's go to our sales scenario here. And here we have a sales proposal that was an email. Here we are, that was just generated by Docs42 by a data workflow in the background, sent to here, and of course also to the customer. And in the attachment, there is um, then, of course, also the PowerPoint presentation. Let's just quickly open it. And you can see here that was triggered by our flow. Good. And those were my quick examples. Narina, I think now you have some time to show us some more examples. 
Yeah, just one question mm -hmm. um, also on on uh, CE. Mm -hmm. How many relationships down can Word, Excel, PowerPoint templates use? Currently, Dynamics limits it to parent-child relations. That's a very good question. For Dr. Litu said, you don't have any limitations. So you, you can really um, link as many data sources, and make as many relationships as you may need, as you always go from one data source to another. As, as long as you have like one field that matches one, from one entity to another, you can go down uh, such levels as you need. Perfect. Thank you very much. There was another question. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's best we come back to this in the Q&A session. Right. It's more a general question. Mm -hmm. uh, great. I will take over now. And as Lisa um, has told us so many great things about Docs42, I think it's actually time to hire her as a sales manager. So that's nice. what I'm going to do now. And um, I'm going to do it with our Power App. And um, I'm just going to hire Lisa and uh, say, OK, her name is Lisa, sorry. <laughs> uh, Lisa Posinger, her email address is lisaposinger at docs42.com. And her phone, let's just put something here, doesn't matter. The position, as she's done such a great job in presenting Docs42, we will, of course, hire her as a sales manager. Um, this is actually important as the document um, will be tailor-made for her position. Um, so as you've seen, we can work with conditions. So here we can, for example, integrate text blocks that are um, specifically meant for sales managers or uh, for developers and so on. And um, as Lisa is such a great person, she will get free lunch every day. <laughs> <laughs> so we can actually also um, work with um, text here that will be integrated in the document. And let's say she gets 5,000 euros per month. Okay. So that's how fast you hire somebody at Docs42. Um, and what happened now in the background is actually a flow was triggered um, that automatically sends a contract to Lisa. But it doesn't only send the contract to Lisa, it also stores it on SharePoint. So we will see what's faster. We will check if the email is here. Of course, I don't have access to um, Lisa's email account, but I have um, access to Michaela's email account. And Michaela is um, the person responsible for um, all our employees and for our HR recruitment. So she also gets a copy of the document delivered. This might take some seconds. Uh, in the background, again, Docs42 is pulling the contract template. It's a Word template and is filling in all the information I just entered um, in my Power App. Okay, let's see if it's already on SharePoint, maybe. Um, we can check if it's already um, here stored. Yes, you can see here um, a flow contract uh, for Lisa Posinger was actually created. So this is, the, this is her contract. And um, as you can see, confidential for Lisa. <laughs> And um, we will see here the salary is actually inserted and um, she is hired uh, as a sales manager, which is written here. Also, the date today um, is inserted and um, there is a special agreement, free lunch every day, like we said and um, the sales remuneration policies. So based on her position as a sales manager, this document is actually inserted. It's a whole Word document, a text block. Great, and now we check if the email arrived. First it did, great. Um, so this email is actually also populated with Docs42 and the contract is simply attached to the, doc to the email. Same document we just saved on SharePoint. 
Yeah, and um, the same thing, of course, can be done um, from SharePoint directly. As many of you mentioned that you also are interested in um, digital signing, you can actually also send this contract via DocuSign right away. So this is another output action we have available out of the box. Um, I can just send this contract also for email and you can then um, directly sign it. So this might also take some seconds. It's usually very fast, but let's check. And you will be able to see the document in DocuSign, uh, review it and sign it right away. But of course, as mentioned, you're really flexible in the output. So you can also work with other digital signing applications or um, archive them to other programs. Um, we also had someone interested in SAP. So this is also possible. Um, yeah. well, it's not so fast today. <laughs> Our internet is Still needs to wake up a little bit. In the meanwhile, while this is loading, I can answer some, some more questions that came in. One question was on the architecture of Docs42. So Docs42 is a web service that can be called via REST and SOAP calls in this platform independent. So you can use it from Dataverse, from Dynamics, from Power Automate, from SharePoint, but also from websites. You can really integrate it um, into any overview um, you would like. So it's quite flexible on that. That was a question. Then someone asked about uh, Microsoft is now engaging Fluid Framework to achieve the same real-time data sharing, particularly inside Office apps, if we're planning to use that. That's something I don't know, to be honest, and I'm going to pass on to the team to have a look at this and we can we could come back to uh, with an answer on that to you. And another question that came in is if data coming from Dynamics to Excel makes a change to, the, to a cell in Excel, Excel does a calculation and the answer from the Excel calculation populates data and so on. Yes, that is possible. So you can use um, Excel as a calculation and charting engine, and you could, for example, have calculations or also charts in dynamic uh, in, in Excel, which you can then make dynamic with data coming from dynamics that then does the calculation with that and repopulates that that outcome, that calculation, or that newly generated um, a chart back into your document. So yeah, that works. Thank you. And in the meantime, I also realized what the mistake was because, um, of course, Lisa received the document via DocuSign <laughs> and not Michaela because she doesn't need to sign it. But I just sent a document also to Michaela to show you that this um, really works. And we can see here um, now that the contract is actually for Michaela and now she could just simply sign the document. Yeah, so, so much for the for the Power App scenario and uh, SharePoint scenario. Um, and this was actually also the whole live demo. Um, so I'm going to switch over uh, to our slide deck really quickly. And just to show you the biggest benefits of Docs42, you have seen a lot today. But uh, just to sum it up, it's really easy to um, create intelligent, high quality documents with Docs42 that you can actually design in Word, Excel and PowerPoint. So one question was if we have an Excel um, add-in as well. Yes, we do. So you have seen Word and PowerPoint today, but Excel is also possible. Um, I think you've seen a lot of data sources today, so you're really flexible in integrating um, data sources into your document and also when generating the documents. So you have seen CE, Power Apps, SharePoint today, but it's also possible with PC and FO, SAP. You can come to us and we can show you a demo of that as well. And um, yeah, that's, we're also very quick to react to Microsoft and ERP trends 
and we also like to be part of this community. So um, this is really an important focus for us. And um, like Lisa said at the very beginning, copy and paste is our biggest enemy um, and uh, Docs42 just takes this hassle away from you and really um, saves you a lot of time and is also very easy in collaborating. And uh, last but not least, I think you saw it with drag and drop and um, creating those data maps, it's really intuitive to use. And um, that's also something we really focus on and um, really also take up our customers and uh, try to improve the um, intuitive design over and over. So um, yes, that was all from us for now. And uh, now we, if there are any else questions, uh, we're happy to answer them. Actually, someone followed up um, slides in the chat to be, yeah, someone asked to, to share the slides and if the recordings will, will be available, we can share anything and you can also reach out to us. And someone has followed up more on the Excel question, so maybe I'm going to show you just really quickly um, another scenario where we actually do that with Excel, the question where we dynamically update data. And I'm just going to look for my right SharePoint site so you can see it. And if you then afterwards want some more information, want to test it yourself, just reach out to us. But basically, we have an employee list here within um, within um, SharePoint, and here I can choose. Okay, I want to have an employee list of these three people here, and I want to generate a document for them, a PDF list, where I also see the achievement of each employee. And that achievement is actually a dynamic graph that is stored in Excel but which we update with data here coming from the SharePoint list. So we can see here is our, is our achievement, and this is a graph which was updated with data coming from, from SharePoint. And I could even say, okay, I want to sort this and this open the PDF list again. And now we will see that this is sorted and here back in the background, we are um, updating that information in, in Excel. And if you want to see that in more detail, if, if you want me to show you the template and everything, I think this is something we can take aside. Um, so then we will have some, some more time to do that. But just, just a live example of that. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions? Maybe we can share the slides just yeah. again in the meanwhile. Thank you very much, Narina and Lisa, uh, for that great presentation. I think you've answered everyone's questions here. Um, so the next uh, <laughs> step is there's the there is the barcode to scan so make sure everyone you all scan that barcode please yeah that's a very important one i think it's also posted in the chat mm -hmm. um and then of course everything you've you've seen today you can just contact us i think we have the contact information yes. on our last slide and we are happy to do a demo with you a personal one we have you can have like a 30-day free trial and yeah, just, just reach out to us. We have lots of tutorials and, and videos and samples as well on the website. And some more questions are coming in in the meanwhile. Do you have Adobe eSign at an, in place of DocuSign? Yes, you can also work with Adobe uh, with Adobe Sign. Basically, you can really integrate any e-signature tool. So on the website of us, you can find DocuSign and Scribble, but it can be Adobe Sign or any other tool. It really doesn't matter. And is Docs42 included in Dynamics 365 or do we have to pay additional fees to get it? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not included yet. <laughs> it's a third party tool. So yeah, there's, there's uh, extra licensing on that. Uh, if you're interested in that, of course, um, just reach out to us and we can send you some, some information um, on that and what it would mean pricing-wise um, for your scenario. 
Well, thank you once again, Lisa and Irina, uh, for that uh, very whirlwind tour uh, and explaining how a document automation works across the Dynamics 365 of Microsoft ecosystem. So thank you once again. We hope to see you um, in person um, from next year onwards. We will be going back to in-person events um, as um, next year. So uh, that's not far away. Next year is only a couple of months away now. So that's very exciting, guys. So once again, thank you, Docs42, for uh, supporting the community, the power community, uh, the fantastic prizes. And yes, uh, we um, hope to see you soon again. And yeah, that was a great session. So thanks once again. Um, all the way from Austria, we had Narina and Lisa. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you, ah, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. There you go. Okay, and we can see Neil Parkhurst is already online. There you go. So there's Neil. So I haven't seen, I haven't actually seen Neil in a long time now. So it's great to see you there. Um, so Neil, your session starts in four minutes. So uh, before before we begin with your session,